Hi there. <clears throat> so building a search engine is something really complex. But personally, we have Algolia that helps us with that. But actually building the front-end user interface, well, that's actually something that's also not easy to do. And this is exactly what View Instant Search does. So in this talk, which will be about, uh, it will be a 30-minute talk, uh, I'm going to present you and introduce you to some of the patterns, uh, the concepts, and the features of view we leverage um, to make the library as easy to use as possible. A few words about myself. So I'm a self-taught developer. Um, I've been working for a couple of web agencies. I've done some freelancing for two years. Um, then I've run my own company for five years. And today I'm a happy member of Algolia. More recently at Algolia, what I've been focusing on is uh, working with different communities, including so the WordPress community, uh, the Laravel community, and more recently, the, the Vue community. So the first question is, what is Vue Instant Search? And maybe I will ask you the question is, like, who knows about Vue Instant Search here? That's not a lot. Cool. <laughs> So to answer that question, I'm probably first going to introduce you to, um, to Instant Search itself. So Instant Search is the name we give to all the libraries here at Algolia that, that helps you actually build your front-end search uh, interface. And it's basically a bunch of reusable components you can just start using right away. And the focus in, on those, those libraries is actually to improve the the productivity of the developers, but we also keep in mind that it has to be fun to use so that you can quickly build uh, like rich feature, featured search interfaces. And so we have instant search for a lot of different uh, languages and platforms, including JavaScript, um, React, React Native, and also for mobile platforms uh, like Android or iOS. And so Vue Instant Search is simply um, the Instant Search tailored for Vue. And here you can see a few lines of code, which is simply the way we actually um, instantiate a plugin and tell Vue to use it. And this is actually all you need to start using Vue Instant Search in your Vue um, application. So with this code, it will actually register all the components we make available, and you can start using them in your template. So this is the kind of user interface you can build with Vue Instant Search. And I'm going to break this down in a, in a few little pieces. So first, you have the search bar. Every time you type a character, it's going to actually, behind the scenes, it's going to trigger a call to Algolia. And then the results will come back, and we will instantly refresh the results you see underneath. On the right side and on the left side, you actually see some filters, which are also updated uh, in lifetime. And what you can also see is that all the numbers, all the counts on every filter are also refreshed in, in real time, but we also remove the options that are no longer, um, that no longer make sense in the context of the search. And this is because Algolia knows about your current context of the search and will only return you the, the, the actual options that still make sense in the context of your search. And the final component we have here is simply pagination, but you already probably know that kind of component. Just to give you a quick overview of what this looks like in terms of a view templating, I hope you can read the code properly. So basically, what you can see here is that we have first an, a search box component, and we'll talk later about the index component. So a search box component, this is all we need to actually uh, have an output it input, a search input. And this will handle all the logic of updating the query uh, and doing the call to Algolia and everything. We then have a refinement list, which is actually the filter which will allow for face hitting, filtering the search on an actual actor. And then you can see a very simple results component where we just provide a template for displaying a single movie. And then it will loop over that template. We'll see how that works. 
And finally, we have the pagination component, which again is simply a component you can drop as is in your application and it will work out of the box. So what we're gonna talk about, um, the first concept I'd like to introduce is what we call the search tour. It's basically what's gonna hold the state of your search. And this is gonna interact, every component is gonna interact with that state there. And then to make that available to every component, I'm gonna talk about uh, the feature in view called provide inject. And I'm also gonna talk about mixin and see how we can make it really easy for users to create custom components by leveraging uh, view mixins. Finally, we'll have a quick look at computed setters and getters. And at the end, I'll talk about slots and scope slots to allow for easy um, customizing of the output of components. So first, the search door. And for that, we're going to take a look inside our index component. So first of all, what we call an index in Algolia is you can think of it as a table in your database you use every day. It's where actually every, every line in that table is an actual record in Algolia. Every search operation, it has to target a single index. You have to tell Algolia, I want to search on this, this index. Here's what the index component looks like when you use it. It's a simple wrapper component. And here you can see there's like minimum information we need to pass it, including the index name the, and the application ID to locate the index in Algolia. And finally, the API key. You can find all those information in the Algolia dashboard. And from there, what's happening behind the scenes is the moment you is gonna create that instance of that component, it's gonna create a search for behind the scenes. And again, that search tour is gonna hold the state of the search for all the components that are underneath it. So that every component that are wrapped into that index component, they will interact with that same search tour. So to give you a quick overview of what it looks like, the search tour actually stores two states, two different concepts of states. The first part is the query parameters. So the query parameters is what's sent along with every request to Algolia. Um, for example, it's gonna be the, the, the actual refinement you want to send with the, with the request to Algolia, or the number of hits you wanna retrieve, or the actual query you're typing. So those are query parameters. And you also have the search results that are returned from Algolia, and we also wanna store those. Then the components, all the search components, what they're gonna do is simply mutate and observe the query parameters or simply observe the search results. So like I said, every component and actually not having a component interact with the search tour wouldn't make sense. So we need to make sure that the search tour is available to every component. And for that, we actually leveraged the provide inject feature of you, which is pretty recent. I don't know how many people of you have ever used provide inject in view. So that's not a lot of people. So in the end, the, the provide inject feature is a simple way to kind of define a global variable and let uh, all components that are underneath it access that variable. And so it's very handy when you have this kind of pattern where you have this wrapping component and you wanna share that state with all the, comp uh, with the components, whatever, no matter how deep they are in the tree and let them access that variable. So it's a very simple concept and the, the implementation is also very simple. And I'm gonna give you an example and we're gonna actually go over the code of the index component itself. It's a bit simplified, but it will demonstrate the principle. I'm just gonna go over every line just to explain it a bit better. So here we just import a factory method uh, to create the actual store instance. Here's just the name of the component. We accept some props here. And here you can actually see that we add this provide method. And this is gonna actually be picked up by uh, view. And what it's gonna do is that every key of that return object is gonna ma be made available to the components 
if and only if they decide to inject it. So they actually have to reference, uh, they actually have to tell you, I want this specific key to be injected. So here we simply create um, the actual store and we actually expose it as underscore search store. And to use that, so let's imagine this is a component that is somewhere down in the tree and that is wrapped by the other component. Then at this point, you can simply say, I want to inject the search store key and it's going to look into the actual tree up and go fetch the, like the, the closest um, component that exposes that, that key. In this case, however, there's one thing you need to be care, um, careful with is this actually wouldn't work because by default, the provide inject feature um, doesn't make your uh, objects that are provided um, reactive, which means that it's not observed by default, which means here, the search store object is not wrapped into an observable um, view object, which means that if this, the query changes in your object, it's not going to re-render this. So this will only uh, display the first query when the component is actually created. But we'll see right after how we actually work around this. So we want to provide this because every component needs to access that search store. One of our other focus was to make sure that users could or developers could really easily create new components. And what we knew is a component is so, simply something that actually interacts with a searcher, either to mutate the state or to observe the state and to re-render the view, right? And so we decided to create a very simple mix-in that would actually provide that feature. So just to give you a quick introduction about mixin, so this is the official uh, definition. So mixins are a flexible way to distribute reusable functionalities for view components. When a component uses a mixin, all the options in the mixin will be mixed into the component's own options. So it's kind of inheritance, but you can have multiple in inheritance here. So how we leverage this? This is our actual mixin which is our component mixin. So every time you're, you will want to actually create a new component, all you have to do is use this mixin. And what it does here is that it declares uh, that it accepts a property called search store. And if that property is not um, provided, what we do is that we're gonna actually fall back to the injected value. And this is this nice pattern where you can either manually provide uh, an instance of the search component, the search store, or you can actually um, rely on the fact that, 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 that the search store is provided somewhere up in the tree. This is also handy for testing because given that you can now pass down the search store as another option than to actually wrap the component component in another one, you can easily test the component in total isolation here. So how you would create your custom component. So this is a very simple example. All we do here is we actually import the component mixin. We use it, we reference it. We tell you that we want to use that component, which is going to make sure that we have this property search store. And if it's not provided, then it's going to resolve it from an index component up in the tree. And then we simply display, we fetch the actual query, the current query from the search store, and we display it. And this is a very simple component that just displays the current query in the search store. And now we're going to take a look at the component that's going to actually mutate the state of the search store. For this example, um, we're going to just recreate the search input component we offer in the, in the library. Of course, we already provide this, this uh, search input natively, but I think it, it makes a good example here. So here we only have uh, a search input, very simple one, and we use the vModel directive of view um, to simply store the value of the input directly into the query variable. So what this nor normally does is 
it's gonna store the query. It's gonna bind the, the value of the input to the query as a variable of the component. In our case though, all the state is stored on the search drawer, so we do not want that. What we actually want is to bind that value to the search drawer. We wanna read that value from the search drawer, and we actually wanna set that value when it changes on the search drawer. And so how we do that, how we did that, how we implemented it, is we leverage computed setters, uh, which you might not know, but you probably know about computed getters. So here's how we did it. So again, we simply import the component, we use it as a mix-in, and here the only interesting part is, instead of for the query having directly a method as the query and returning, retrieving the value, what we actually do is we give it an object and there's two methods in here. And this is not view instance search specific, this is really like a view feature. It's a way for you to indicate how to set the value and to get the value. It gives you more control over the way the actual uh, computed property work, works. And it plays very nicely actually with the, the V model directive because now instead of storing the value on a property on your, in your actual data of the component, you're gonna actually store it directly wherever you want, in our case, the search drawer, and the value is retrieved from the search drawer as well. So now I'd like to share um, our approach regarding reusable of our components. So a component is two things. It's the behavior of the component and the actual display, the UI, the look and feel. So the behavior is really like the look and feel, uh, no, sorry. <laughs> the behavior is actually the core logic of the component. Uh, in our case, we think that the moment you wanna change that behavior, we, we probably will guide you towards the path of actually just using the mixin and using the search store directly and using the, the actual exposed API there to create your custom components because it's simple. However, our job is still to make sure that we provide a good amount of existing uh, co common components in order for you to not have to do that. On the UI though, it's about to look and feel the appearance. And this, in general, you will want to change it, right? Because you already have some style, ex existing CSS, you already have um, your bootstrap framework or whatever, and so you will want to adapt the DOM. You need to have more control over that. And also because you probably want to change the text and translate it and that kind of thing. Here, I'm just gonna show you a very simple component we have, which is called the no results component. And as you might guess, this, is, this will actually simply display a message uh, to the user when there is no results currently in the state of the search. So how you can use that component, again, very simple. You wrap it into an index component, like always, so that it can access the search store. And then you just reference the new component. So now the question is, how can I actually change that default message, right? And this is exactly where slots and scope slots come in. So think of slots as placeholders where you can actually let your users override the default implementations. If we go back to the no results component, you can see that the, the text is wrapped into a slot here. And in order for users to override this, they can simply provide their own version like this. And this will simply override the default implementation. So it's very, very simple, very convenient there. They don't have to create a new component, they just can drop it in line in the template and without doing much. Now there's a second thing in here, is that as you can see, we actually bind a query to the slot itself. And in this case, what we actually do is we provide the slot with some context, and that context you, you will be able to access it. And when you do so, it's, it's, called, it's what we call scope slots, is you're gonna actually give a scope uh, to the template that's gonna be rendered. 
And what's nice here is that this time, when using the component, I'm going to define the scope. I'm going to say, I want you to give me the scope inside the context variable. And then in this variable, you can actually access all variables you bound to that slot. So in our case, we just bound the query variable. So now the user can access it here. And here, so the, the, the scope of this is really the scope that is inside the other component. It's not a, the scope of this, this actual uh, application here. So a few tips regarding slots, at least those are my tips. Um, I think they're really an incredible way to let users extend and reuse the components. Um, probably not used enough. Uh, it's very cool because it lets user really just inline their custom text and whatever. So it's, it's really convenient. I would say that exposing the variables, at least the variables you use in the default implementation of the scope, uh, of the slot, sorry, makes a lot of sense. A user should be able to reproduce the default implementation at least. So if you expose those variables in the slot, they can easily go crazy with their implementation, do conditions, change the DOM. So that's, that's very good. And I feel like it's a good alternative to forcing users to create kind of a new component uh, because just the thought of it, sometimes people are a bit reluctant to the idea of creating uh, a new component because they feel like it's a, it's a, it's a heavy process and slots are uh, way more welcomed in general because you just instantiate a component and you just override a given slot. And so it's, we, we have very f good feedback on that. So the concept we talk about. Again, the search store, our way of making sure that we provide uh, the, the state of the search to every component. So you probably know about Vuex, for example, which is also a store, which does the same. There's a little difference in our implementation in the way that we took the compromise of saying our store can be mutated directly. And we took that compromise to make sure that um, it was easy to apprehend and very easy to use. Of course, you have the issues that uh, you're going to mutate directly variables. So tracking is a bit more difficult than if you had that one direction flow that you can have in view. But there's a bit less boilerplate. But that's the compromise we took here. In order to make that search for available, we used, so we leveraged the pro to provide inject feature of view which is very convenient uh, for this kind of use case where you have a wrapper component with some state that you want to sh share with um, components down in the tree. <clears throat> to make sure that people can actually create easily components, we made sure that to provide a, a very simple mix-in, where it's just you import that mix-in, you use it, and the search store is available, and then you start actually using it and creating your component. And I feel like that in that kind of uh, UI library, th that should be a focus, really making sure that people can create new components easily. And I feel like the, like the view mixing approach here is, is very convenient for that. Finally, I quickly showed you about the computed setter because I learned about it like pretty late in the learning process of view. It was kind of hidden somewhere in the docs. So. And uh, it really solved that issue of overriding the, the way you use the V model directive. So I, I thought I'd share it here. And finally, slots and scope slots that really help in making sure users can translate the content and, and, and easily customize the appearance, the DOM, and everything. So a few links to finish. Uh, the View Instance Search project can be found on our community website. Um, there's also a more detailed blog post about the reasons, the why we actually built this library, so you can go check it out. My handle on Twitter, if you want to chat about anything, is Ray Ratches, and you can find me on Twitter and GitHub. Thank you.
I think we can have some questions, if you have any. So anyone want to ask some questions? All right. Nice. So yes, I see uh, in your root component is going. You are passing the. It's an index, and you are passing an API key. Yes. Why uh, do it like this versus, for example, using uh, the store you just created, like view, views, and you pass the store and you set the API key in the store and the index. Because it looks a bit weird to have a, let's say I'm building one page, SP, single page replication. I'm going to use an index on Algolia. And then I, my first element is going to be Algolia index. Is there any alternatives? Yes. Um, so actually, first, given the fact that you can inject the search store manually everywhere, it means that you can also create the search store in your application and then pass it down to every component. So that's an option. And even the index component itself, you can pass it a search store directly. And in that case, you don't pass the, like, the API credentials and, and those kind of things. It's really to use cases, but you can do both, actually. OK. You can throw it. Um, it's more of a view question, but what was the original intent of uh, inject if it doesn't change, if it doesn't mutate on every you know refresh of the store. That's probably a good question for you. <laughs> so it, ideally, the the goal was to replicate a bit. Uh, I think it's called context in React. Um, so it's useful. Sorry, it's removed. Okay. Uh, so the point is to help libraries for this kind of topics actually. Uh, it's not meant to be used in applications, and it's usually when you really have to pass data on when you nest the components of a library and you want to reuse the information. So, for example, a navbar that has a theme or um, not a theme, but maybe in material, for example, you have different kinds of navbars, and sometimes you need to know what is the kind of navbar the user is using in order to change the behavior of the inner components. Uh, like the nav links or um, the drawer, for example. Uh, the reason it wasn't re <coughs> reactive, uh, now I have, a, I'm not sure about it now. Uh, we have the issue uh, there about, um, so it has, has to be the information. I think it was more because it's so easy to hack and to use that to produce bad code that we didn't want to provide an easy way to do shit code. Um, but at the same time, if you use an object, you have the reactivity on the object, so you completely defeat the purpose. But we couldn't make it around uh, for it, at least without proxies. Okay, yeah. You can try it. What? <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> yes, ça marche. Thank you for your presentation. Uh, I was also curious about the inject uh, pattern because I've never seen it before. Um, I was wondering, did you think about another way of implant implementing this without the inject pattern? How would it look like if we couldn't use the inject pattern? Well, if it wouldn't uh, have this pattern, um, it would probably mean you need to inject the search for everywhere. Uh, what we've also considered is having state on every actual component we have. Uh, so every piece would actually hold something. But given we already had a brick handling that state, uh, which is called the helper, the Algolia helper, we kind of just created a small like layer. Uh, our search store is no more nor less something that was already existing. And we just expose uh, like that API in a way that it's easily observable and put some nice default values there. Um, we kind of tried different approaches and from a user perspective, and because we also had uh, the background from React, uh, because we have also React instance search, we have this kind of declara declarative uh, 
way of instantiating the components, this kind of UI-driven configuration somehow. Um, and we feel like it's pretty convenient for users to write it like that. It's just instantiate the components and it, it actually feels good. Um, so yeah, that's why we did it. And we didn't really find uh, like another way. You can pass down the search tool everywhere if you want. Uh, if you don't want to wrap your things, you can do it. You can also instantiate every component in Vue directly without using templating. But yeah, it's, I guess it's a matter of ease of use of the library. Thank you. But if you have an idea on doing it, like no, I, way, I don't. Yeah. I don't actually. That's why I was asking. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> actually, when I I read on the like the docs, there's this mention that you just said, like about provide inject, where it says, "Be careful. This should probably not be used that much, and you should really consider." So we did consider. Like we really looked at different ways of doing it, but we didn't really find a good way to do it otherwise. So we leveraged the feature. Okay. Thanks. You're welcome. Hello. Uh, thank you. First, uh, and my question was: um, I was wondering, uh, you showed uh, the first code you showed. Uh, you had a list of actors. Yes. But I didn't see any slots. Although in on the screenshot you had those little uh, avatars. Yeah, stuff. It, it's, it's it was a simplified version of what okay. you saw, uh, <laughs> because otherwise Great. you would have HTML and that kind of thing. Yeah, I just wanted to show Fair you enough. like how you would uh, really have something that works but without the customization. Uh, otherwise, it didn't fit on the on the actual screen. So yeah. Okay. And I have a second question. Uh, you also showed that we need to use the whole library of not we need, but you showed that we can use the whole library. Can we we also uh, cherry pick the components? and import those and benefit from tree shaking or something like that? Yes, definitely. So we had an issue until recently because that's a funny story. But So we did all our thing with uh, made sure that all the code was tree shakable. I don't know if we can say that. But, um, so everything worked. We realized that, OK, we can probably tree shake and just import single components. So in our what we export, like we have an ES module that we export. So you can just import uh, given uh, components, and it 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 worked perfectly. And at some point, we saw this nice pattern where you can say like, if we detect that the window is there and that there's view, then uh, automatically do view use uh, the library. But the issue is that given this code actually references everything, it it screwed up all the tree shaking, but for every module. So what we did is that we create different builds for the UMD where we actually implemented this. So if you use the UMD build of our library, it will automatically inject all the components because anyway, you're loading all the library. So, uh, and for the other, uh, for the ES module, you can now properly tree shake and import just the components. Cool. Okay, so I think we can go. Yeah. All good. Thank you.